Alright guys, welcome back to another Grease Monkey tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be covering some different features that the Grease Pencil has, like in the edit options, and um, just different useful tips and tricks that I have. Alright, I got this little example image here with uh, that reflection that I love so much. And uh, let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is the trim paths. So when you're making or drawing anything in the grease pencil, let's go to the drawing context here. So when you're drawing anything, let's say you're drawing a bunch of circles. So you draw a circle like this, like that. So what, what the trim option does is it trims off the edges there and just keeps the circle part. So let's go to edit mode. And if you select the stroke, um, you'll see that there are different contexts here. So there is points and stroke. And those are the only two you have to remember. Pressing one and two switches between them as well. So if you go to the stroke mode and you right click, you'll have different options than if you go into, I'm sorry, the point mode. And you'll have different options if you go into the stroke mode. You'll see them here. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to stroke mode and you see trim right here and you notice that it's on the point mode right there see it's gone so in stroke mode right click and hit trim and you'll see that it cuts off the edges we'll do that for the rest of them trim and you'll see that you start trimming off those little loose ends uh, something to note on is that it only takes the first intersection and trims that so if you had two intersections let's see like like that it's only going to get this first one here and delete the rest we'll see it here and there it is uh so this is really useful for trimming up and cleaning up any of your line work so the next thing i want to show you is smoothing uh smoothing is very useful so like let's say you draw if we draw a circle and we wanted it to be a lot smoother than this we wanted a more of a perfect circle if you uh go into edit mode select your stroke uh right click and hit smooth stroke you'll get this option down here sometimes it's it's like hidden like this you just click on it and you can smooth it out by repeated and change the factor and you'll see it's, it's it'll start smoothing out if you max it out to 20 put it a bunch so you got not smooth smooth this is very useful if you want to start getting cleaner and cleaner lines and while I'm on this topic of smooth, now let's smooth it out like this, right? We got nice and smooth. You can do it again to make it even smoother. If you right click, go into point mode, you see like there's all these different points here. All these little individual points. And what I think is better is if you, you simplify it and get less points. So you can take up less space and things can run better. So I would go to stroke and go to simplify and we have three options fix adaptive and sample I like to use sample and with sample you see that it erases all the hundreds of little points on there and simplifies it to its most basic form you can put this length up higher and you can see less and less points into the point where it's only three points but this makes it a lot easier so you don't have so many points uh and now we got a nice and uh jagged i know that's not what you want but i'll show you how to fix that to make it uh, probably a better approach to to fix that so go into edit mode and let's say we want it to be even more circular there's another another option you can use you can select them all right click oop, right click and go to sphere and what this will do is it'll try to make the the points form a perfect circle let's see there we go so you see how it kind of like shapes it up to be a perfect circle so there we go and as you see this is still jagged what you can always do is use less points and then go to the modifiers and go to subdivide and you can add in as many subdivisions as you want and there you're back to smooth but you're keeping the basic like uh the basic mesh of it a lot simpler and I think that'll be better in the long run once you start getting bigger and uh, bigger projects. So we covered trimming, smooth, simplifying to sphere. Uh, another thing 
to to add into your workflow let me get back into this here is to use uh, joining and merging in editing mode so let's say I'm, I'm trying to do this hair here and I just start drawing it like this like one two three four so when you go to edit mode you see that all these and go to stroke mode you see that all these are disconnected so I think if you want to have them connected so there's like not like these little frayed edges here you can select one and then select the other one and uh control j and that'll join them right there uh and you can do that for all of it so select them all control j and it will select all the ones that you want to connect it's a little weird now so let's do this let's grab Select both points, control J, connect it, grab. And I think the way this works is that it connects the nearest edges together. Like that, grab, control J. And then you select those together and see, oh, look at that. Okay, so what you want to do is to fix this is you go into the sculpting tools uh, and go to smooth and you can smooth those out nice and perfect. And uh, so that's the joining, joining and merging. So then you join all the parts. So now you have this one piece. Oop, missed the piece. Let's connect that. So now you have this one piece that's uh oh, let's leave that you have this one piece here and you want to connect these edges together so um the key that you would use is f and that'll close the loop and as you see it closes the loop right there let's try it again like this if you just want it for it to close on itself you select it hit f and you can select it and just keep hitting f and you'll close all the loops and then this will make it easier for you to paint inside if you if you needed to let's see paint and you can close the loop on different things make the fill tool a lot more usable all right another tool to utilize would be these tools here which are the radius the bend and the shear so I'll show you some examples so if we went here and we thought like this edge was just the the outline was way too thick we can select the 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 stroke that you want it's this one right here go into edit mode I'll go to stroke so it selects the whole thing and hit the radius here and you can make it thicker or smaller and that's very useful for changing the overall thickness of things and then another tool that I love using is the bend tool and the bend tool what it does is it bends your mesh so I'll show you an example on this side all right we'll make a square let it be we will assign it this and we'll see all these dots here that's our resolution and if we hit bend we can bend this and it's going to bend from wherever the uh, origin is so i think the origin is right here so it's always going to bend from there so let's see if we can change this tool here So it'll always bend from the origin and that's very useful and to change the origin the way i like to do it is i like to make the 3d cursor visible uh, go to cursor mode and i'll put it right here and you right click on the object while we're in object mode and you hit set origin to 3d cursor and then when you go to edit mode hit the bend tool you'll see that it'll bend from the origin from where you want it to bend right there 
That's also a very useful tool I like to use. All right, so when it comes to layers, I think you should be separating all your objects into different layers and different stroke objects. As you see on the outliner here, I have uh, different strokes for the glasses. So the glasses on off, the hair, the head. I mean, it's all separated. And for all of them, I have the option in the stroke menu for sh under strokes to, oh, except this one to be 3D location. So with 3D location, what that does, it takes account the 3D space and that's how it layers all your layers. So when you look at this from the side, you'll see that everything's kind of separated in a 3D space. And I can really pick and choose where things lie and it not be beholden to some sort of like layer order from within the stroke. This is just within the 3D viewport. So it works really nice. So easy ways to separate um, parts of your 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 grease pencil is let's do it with the glasses here. So for these glasses, I have the rims, the reflection, and the glass. Oh, they're already separated. So let's say these are combined. Let's combine them now. So if we have these, this object, it both has the glass and the rim. And usually I, I like those separated so I can make that reflection effect. So I would choose, go to stroke mode, pressing two, choose the glass. Let's choose them here. I hit G. Oop. All right, I got the glass. So now that I have the glass, I'm gonna separate that and you can do that by hitting M and then I'll move it to another layer and it should be in that layer. Nope, it just made the new layer. So hit M again and then hit glass or GP new layer. And now we separated that. So M is the key to separate your objects within the stroke into different layers. But if I wanted just to have the glass on a different stroke object, so an entirely different blender object here, you would hit P and you do select the points and that makes a whole nother object, which is the glass here. So the last tip I like to use or less effect I like to use is this window in the background here. And if you look at the window, you'll see that the sun is there and some grass. You'll see that it actually looks like it's outside, even though when you look behind it, there is nothing behind that. And what I'm doing is, is I'm doing the same technique I used for this reflection on the glasses and, but making it so the objects are further back and I'll show you what the glasses looks like. And then I'll show you what the back the window looks like. So we'll go to glasses, go to this mode. We'll go to edit. All right, so when we go into edit mode, we'll see that these two bars are my reflection. And I have the stroke on 3D location, so I put it up in front of the glasses, but then I also make it within its own layer. So here's a reflection layer. And I hit this little button here and it does the mask. And that's how it creates that effect. You can't see it there, but once you get out of edit mode, you'll see that the mask works on it. So I do the same thing for the window. Let's go body, background, window. So in this window, if when you go to edit mode, you'll see that the sun is actually back there and I have it. So here's the window border. Here's the stuff that goes behind the window. And here's the window itself, which is just a square. And I'm using this, the sun and the grass and putting it as a mask of the window so it cuts it out so when you go out of edit mode you'll see that it's in there but in edit mode you'll see that it's just behind it it's, and it's causing that illusion to make it look like it's back there and overall i think that's a pretty neat effect i know we went kind of quick on this so if you have any questions on any of these techniques or 
if something's not going your way, you can download this project file uh, with the link below in the description and just ask me a question and uh, I'll be sure to answer you. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you next time.